everybody. Uh, welcome to Dumb Dads. I'm Chris. I'm Nick. And this is our Fantabulous Fright Fest. Ba, so. Ba, Duke, oh, Duke, God. Duke, Duke. I hate Duke, you so much. Ba, ba, Duke, so. Duke. This is our series where we are watching horror movies for the month of October. Um, this month we are, or this week we are uh, watching Baba Duke, um, which you yeah, can find are. on Netflix. Um, I'm going to go ahead and point out right now because we never do this in time. We're going to spoil the crap yeah. out of this oh, yeah. movie. We're going to talk about everything about it. We're going to discuss why I hate it because I hate all horror movies. Just to be clear, there's nothing personal against this movie. I just hate horror. I want to get to that in a second, but you know. Uh, but so with that being said, I'm going to kind of throw this to Nick now for the rest of the episode, because Nick, you, you're you the person who came up with this beautiful idea. You're the one who decided to torture me, so you can lead the ship. You can figure out what the hell I'm supposed to respond to. Bob, so. Duke, Tell Duke, me about Duke, the Duke. Duke. All right, so the reason I picked this film to begin with is I thought it was a really interesting story about a single parent, and I think that there's a lot of metaphors in this for that, so we'll That's get fair. there. Sure. Um, I also have tried to pick movies that were critically reviewed well and not make you watch something that is... This was a, critically reviewed well? Yes. Okay. Um, it is It is kind of a cult classic at this point. It did not do well financially in the box office in its homeland of Australia, but it did do very well here once on Netflix. Okay. Um, so let me start this way. Uh, outside of... Did you like this movie? All right, so here's my... <laughs> I'm, so, Chris, go ahead and spend the next 30 minutes complaining. Yeah, did you um, like this movie? No, I did not like it. Did you find merit in it? I, uh, no, I don't think I did, no. Not really. Did you like it more than The Quiet Place? Maybe. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're getting right. somewhere. Um. So, my, my generalized, quickly summed up feelings about this movie is that I fucking hate being like uncomfortable and scared and awkward <laughs> and this movie made me uncomfortable like why? i don't know that i would call it scary why did it make me uncomfortable so i think it did two things very well um i think first it really made you understand well not necessarily uh entirely knowing why but you know that the mother uh has some some lingering animosity for the son mm-hmm. And that made me really uncomfortable the entire time. Nice. Um, you you know that there's something going on with uh, with the reason why the dad's no longer with them, presumably whatever the death is. And you realize relatively quickly that, look, this is a situation where the mother has, I don't want to say blame for the child, but at the very least some like resistance to the child because of that. And that's just one of those things that right now in my life that makes me really uncomfortable. Which is one of the reasons why I picked this film. Yeah. Um, I thought because it, I think it touches on a lot of fears that you have just as a person, which I think this mm-hmm. movie does really well. So just so you know, the dad dies um, in a car accident driving her to give birth. So just for the record, that's literally the last thing this movie, no, the second to last thing this movie does. But you should know that like, what's that? Tell you that the, the father dead. dies in the so car accident like, while she's giving birth or whatever. The survivor guilt. Um. So yeah, I think this movie's really great for the, uh, like, the uncomfortableness of the parents. So I watched this movie long before I had a kid um, and really liked it because I thought that it was creepy. I thought it had a good villain, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked the kid trying to fight the villain in a sense with his weapons, his like homemade weapons. Um, okay. Uh, but as a parent, the idea of what is it when you both are maybe have animosity towards your child or mm-hmm. are afraid of your child. And I wanted to say, what do you think the Baba Duke is? Do you think it's like, do you think it's a metaphor? Do you think it's real? Do you think it's um, are you are you talking about like critically? What do I think the Baba Duke is? Or do you are you asking me what I think as like a, an audience member an slash o- writer? An audience member slash writer. I think it's a fucking monster. You do think it is? Um, so while I was watching the film, what I had predicted, and it seems as though I was fairly accurate, was that the uh, the Baba Duke was going to end up being some sort of metamorphosis of the deceased father, mm-hmm. whether it be like a literal uh, 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 embodiment of the father because there's that whole, like, after you see what's inside him, you'll wish for death. I'm like, well, that's obviously going to be her dead husband then, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I like I wasn't sure if it was going to be, like, um, the embodied, like, like, some sort of a, like, the, the conceptual, like, 
parenthood sort of uh, the father who left and abandoned like that sort of sensational feeling or something if it was going to be sort of more meta because that seemed to be the direction the film was going from the opening yeah uh the opening shots of her falling in her bed uh so the other thing i i would love to know is so you said you said this movie well for, okay did this movie logically work for you better than a quiet place because i know when we talked about quiet place you were talking about how like the world just didn't like it didn't work for you and it threw the movie off did this movie at least set up a world that you could buy into and- yeah i like because this very much takes place in the real world mm-hmm. right like it takes place in the real world but there's a monster in it yeah. um and, and that is very sensible to me um not that i'm like a ghost believer but like it the, like okay, you add in the one like the one step of logic. Hold and, on, but I know that ghosts scare you. So the idea uh, of ghosts you have said scare you. Like ghosts. You, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah oh, oh, that's you a whole thing. You have told me that. There's a thing there that we'll go into but maybe I'm someday, but saying, we're not gonna go that rabbit Baba hole right Duke, now. Duke, Duke. Um, the, what I like the things that worked for me in this film very strongly were like the idea that the like the dick kid um <laughs> like the kid who is pushing uh like his his cousin out of the the tree house and like potentially like at, at least breaking her leg or whatever and potentially killing her yeah um and like that's a very reasonable thing like her his his cousin was a dick like that was awful like it's just like your daddy died and now you're a terrible like no screw you you kind of deserve to get pushed out of that tree house um, but also no. <laughs> but you shouldn't um, do it. Okay, listen, I know why you did it, but you shouldn't do it. Yeah, that. like that type of stuff really worked for me. Like that all made sense. Like the idea of like you went to the police and the police won't help you because you burned the evidence. All right, cool. I get this. Like I really appreciated the moment in the school where they're suspending him or whatever and, and or expelling I'm not really sure which it was. I think he gets expelled. Uh, regardless, yeah. I really appreciate the moment where the teacher just goes, so you want me to put an entire classroom of students at risk for the sake of your one child? I'm like, yeah, fuck you, parent. But as um, a parent, isn't that exactly where you would be? Uh, Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, I also wouldn't as like, no, my kid's fine. Screw you. You're, you're just bad at your job. <laughs> this is your fault. Um, and of course, my wife is a teacher, so <laughs> sorry, honey. You're also a bad mother. Um, yeah, that's going to get you me went, you divorced just went right there. now. Yeah, you yeah, totally I'm went there. The, I love you, honey. If you're listening, I, I'm glad you don't listen to the show. But if you are, I love you. So the world worked. So the a world was set up for you. Yes. Okay. So my next question is then, and you kind of mentioned that you don't like scary movies. Hate did them. this Did this movie scare you, and why? I'm not sure. I would like. There were a few jump scares. Mm. Um, there were a few jump scares that got me, but for the most part, I wouldn't say that it scared me because it's it's supernatural enough that i don't care you can like disconnect Um, from that yeah like it's just not something that i'm like oh my gosh it could happen like no this ain't gonna happen um what what it did do though was like there was that sort of metaphor and i don't know maybe you want to go to this later but there's sort of the metaphor towards the end where like the mother who hasn't slept in so long is uh like accidentally carrying the knife in very various moments it's like is she crazy is she scared is this the monster that's in her or is like what's going on like, i'm not sure like and that made me a little uncomfortable because that metaphor of like being so exhausted trying to deal with a difficult kid um that's a, a very real sort of uh, like idea that I could I can get on board with. So it's funny that you mentioned the dad and the Baba Duke because I actually when I was watching this movie the first time, especially I remember feeling like the mom is the Baba Duke, like that is the actual. Really, you were thinking the mom was going to yes. end up being like it was just yeah. going to be her, like that she turns into the Baba Duke, like that's what oh. I thought was going to happen because because of like the sleep deprivation and going for the knife that you see her like devolve into this like threat to her child that I was like, oh, that's what the Babadook is. It makes you the Babadook. Yeah, um, and that was like, like once that started like uh, becoming clear that that's what was what was happening, I was like, uh, this is like, so predictable. Because it's like, oh, it's the Babadook over, like, be, embodies you and it becomes you. I'm like, uh, this, like, I saw this coming. Until you find out that there is actually a, uh, a Babadook. Babadook, yeah. yeah. Um, what did you think of the mom in this? Like, did you find her sympathetic, even though there is these moments of like, you can't do that as a parent? I, so I think, so I think she, so this is, I, this is an English film, I assume. It's an Australian film. Australian film. Oh, cool. The next two movies you watch are Australian. This hmm. one and the next one. Um, so what I, what I specifically noticed about this was like, this wasn't Hollywood where like every, like the, like everybody's gorgeous. Everybody's like, it's a very sanitized version of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, like 
the nor was it like super grimy and stylized. It was it was very natural. Um, and because of that, like I, I really I kind of identified with the mourning that the mother was going through. Um, like like there was no moment where you just kind of automatically had her just break down weeping or like some over exaggerated whatever. But the like the the nuanced approach to so to showing mourning I thought was very effective and making me uncomfortable. Which so that's the thing. Um, I would love. So I feel like this movie is really effective in the fact that like. Yeah, there are a few pop scares, but as I watch horror movies, like that's not what I think makes a scary movie. Like, no, of pop, not. pop scares are like icing on a cake, right? I mean, pop scares are what like infuriate me, and by infuriate me, I mean make me want to go hide under the couch they, and never come out because they get you. Because they get me. It's yeah. like I hate this. I hate this. It's cheap. It feels bad, and it lingers. And I think so. I think a good horror movie has some of those because it keeps you like on edge. I think they are necessary. Like they are a necessary component to like a good horror film. But I think this, I think the the point of this movie is to make you feel extraordinarily uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, and as a parent, it made me feel really uncomfortable because you, it's understanding where that mom is. And then also like fighting against those urges. Parent, like you can't do that. Did you, did you get into that level? I of definitely comfort? saw that. Like it definitely, there was an element of like, it's stealing the love you have for your child. Mm. And there, I mean, I can definitely see some sort of a, a metaphor there, like, especially with like the trauma of having lost your husband and in, in part because of having this child. Um, like there's a good metaphor there. Um, but it just, I, I don't know. I, I, I see it. I saw it. I understood it. It made me uncomfortable. That's all I got. That's all, I got. That's all I got right now. I was trying to go. I was, I was like, okay, I'm going to turn this into like, by the time I get there, I'm going to turn this into it's No, I don't got another second. Eh, that's how I felt. I, like, I don't like it. So, well, I guess that's the thing. Like, I think there's a lot of merit in this film because of that, because it, mm-hmm. it, it does what it's looking for really intentionally. What did you think of the, so one of the things I think is works in this film though is overused. There's a lot of like horror movie tropes like the book constantly coming back yeah did that bother you did it work for you so those things don't bother me i think they are just part of the they genre. just annoy me do they like a, a little bit like i get it um but it's such a like obviously coded language for just like okay there's a monster here um i'm just like okay i i get it like if i if that weren't to happen i would be much more interested um and from like even beyond the like critical perspective, it's just they didn't do a lot with it. Like it comes back, it keeps coming back, but they only add any like they give you all those empty pages at the end as a promise of like, okay, here's a Chekhov's gun. We're gonna do something with this. It's gonna get filled out. It's gonna have their answer is gonna be on there. The mystery is gonna add pages and it's gonna be, and they do that once. And then they keep bringing the book back, and it's like nothing else is done with it. So when you say a Chekhov's gun, what do you mean? Like it's on the wall, it's going to go off. It's uh, so uh, the theory of Chekhov's gun for any uh, for our listeners is um, if there's a if there's a gun on the wall in the third act, it has to go off. So in other words, if they show you something that they are implying is going to be important in the third act of the film, the film is ending. It has to be used for some sort of a. Uh, re- for some sort of a resolve, and that book is clearly the Chekhov's gun of this film because mm-hmm. it's it's literally the thing that uh, puts the story into motion. Uh, and they uh, they give you those blank pages as a suggestion that something is important about them, and then they're not. Like you see a couple extra pages later on, and it's like not even like extra pages, like different pages. Like the original pages were different, and then it never comes back. So I'm wondering about that because when we get to the end of the film, we see that they have kept the Babadook. They have trapped this monster who is very much a real monster. Do you think that's the pages? Like it's how can you continue that story now that they have the Babadook? Or how did you feel about the Babadook existing and being trapped? I So look, I hate, I, I, I hate horror movies. So for me, when I movies? go into, oh, I hate horror movies. So when I go into a horror movie, my first assumption is that, look, this is going to be a horror movie. It's going to be a monster. Everybody's going to die and I'm going to be scared poopless. Um, it's not until like a second or third viewing that I'm like, okay. And of course those viewings never come. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not until like a second or third viewing that I'm really able to sit down and go like, okay, here's my critical interpretation of this. Um, 
so the the monster existing didn't really like, it was just like the assumption I had from the beginning. That's so interesting because I did not really. You thought it was going to be one of those. I like, really thought she was going to be the be the Babadook, like that there is huh. a monster, but that she becomes the monster. I don't know. They were they were giving us so many tropes from the beginning mm-hmm. of like the the child talking to the invisible person and like all like all of those things that every horror movie does. This movie did them, and so I was just like, "Yep." guess what's going to happen? Um, I like, I had it's, even assumed like, okay, the, this kid is creating all of these weapons and stuff to fight the monster. The kid is going to be the one who, who, uh, who vanquishes the monster. And that like the whole, like, once you see what's behind my, whatever, you'll be, you'll wish you were dead. I was like, Oh, the kid is going to kill the Babadook. They're going to open it up and find out that it's, uh, it's the father and he'll have killed the father again. Oh, that's going to be good. Nope. See, it's so funny that you go to the dad and I just focused on the mom the whole time I'm watching it. Like, my theory was like, yeah, he'll kill, like, all the same things you said, but that the Babadook, be- the mother becomes the Babadook. That, like, so why are you, like, what in the film led you to think that it's going to be about the mother? So the fact that, like, it seems to me anyway, as this movie goes, that she's, as she doesn't sleep, right, that she's losing sleep, right? And as she loses more sleep, as things seem, mm-hmm. as the difficulties of the child elevate, which I find interesting, uh thing to think about is he actually elevating or is it that she can't sleep and so it's making just his normal self elevate right like the thing that happens sure. when you're tired that 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 is what the babadook is the babadook while while existing is a tangible thing is a tangible thing in the parent killing the child and that to me was horrifying when i was watching it um to be like this mother this thing is going to infiltrate the mother so much so that she ends up being the Babadook and killing her child. Um, like I, when I'm watching the film though, like that's not what they're setting up. Like they are setting up so many little like, like niblets of like, Oh, you've been so terrible since your husband died. I didn't oh, get this, that though. Like, what... I get that there's trauma in his past, but we can't take care of him anymore. Like they keep setting up the father, the father, the father, the father. And so like when they show the Babadook and there's the father, I'm like, all right, this dude's the father. And then he's kind of not like well, that's, that's the, I just never went there. It's so interesting to me that, and this is one of the reasons why I think this is actually a good movie. Cause we had, I viewed it twice and saw it the same way. Not that I don't find the father important, but I just never put the father and Baba Duke together. So I, I sincerely do kind of think that the father, if it's not like the literal father, uh, the, the Baba Duke, I'm not that. Let me try this again. I am actually convinced that on some level, the Babadook is the father. I don't know if it's the literal father or the metaphorical father, but I think he's the father because at the end of the film, uh, when they're going down to feed worms to the Babadook, um, the mother kind of says something along the lines of, all right, someday you can see him. And it's like, okay, someday you can meet him. I think that's meaning like that's supposed to imply like we're keeping your father, the Babadook in the basement because that's where they've always kept the, uh, her, uh, his father's stuff earlier in the film. They're suggesting like, you're not allowed to go down here because it's your father's belongings. Um, so my interpretation is that at the end, um, after all of like the father is in the Babadook and in the closet and all that stuff in some way, shape or form, the Babadook is the father. I don't understand why well, or how or any of that crap, but that's the only thing that I can come up with that makes this film make any sense whatsoever. That's funny. Cause I was just about to ask you, why does the Babadook need to be the father? Cause for me, the idea is that the mother conquers this monster that's trying to take over her. And by conquering it, it becomes a tangible thing that they trap. But then why have the father? Like who gives a crap about the father then? Because like, there's all of this stuff about the father in the film. I always thought, it's fun, I just didn't give it that much weight. And maybe that's me not viewing it correctly which could be true but i, I mean there's no correct i mean that, that i'm all right the way i view it sure, is correct just to be right. clear you are the writer but, so i mean that makes sense um, um i always looked at the father so the trauma of the father is the gateway for the babadook to, to attack the mother right like the babadook needs some kind of trauma to shatter this family and it's through that shatter that the that the monster can take hold and the monster then takes hold through the mother to take the child but when that doesn't happen when the mother does not to kill her child, the monster then manifests and they trap it. So it's you trapping your monsters. It's you trapping the darkest part of you and keeping it and feeding it and and trying to control it. And that was the metaphor that I got. Hmm. The father is just a gateway, like um, like a thing that that's there because what happened to him and his presence is important, but he's not the actual Babadook. But what you're saying makes perfect sense too. 
And I mean, look, I, I think your interpretation makes more sense in the way that the Duke takes over the mother at the end of the film. Or like, she, I, I don't know exactly how to describe what it does, but like it enters her through her dream chest and then she's crazy evil bad person and she fulfills the uh, uh the uh i not perfect not the not the revelation not the prediction the what the hell is it called when that thing says what you're gonna do um and she kills the puppy dog then she just fucking like it it makes it all happen and it's a thing and it's just like oh that's the like the the baba duke is becoming you and everything uh what were your thoughts about like how that ties into your thought uh, into your understanding of the film all right so um we just had to break for a second because our kids got home so you're going to have our first appearance of thea and miles on the podcast see you want, thea you want to say hi can you say hi thea no no uh, she can't miles can you say hi hi <laughs> that's miles saying hi all right um so that being said uh, this is going to be a fun final little bit of the conversation. Uh, so Nick, I honestly don't remember what I was asking. I think it was something about the mother being consumed by the Babadook towards the end of the film and how that, yes, the, uh, what did you think about that? Um, I mean, it, it, that's why I thought the whole thing, the mom would become the Babadook. I mean, that was what gave me that. It so kind you of, had that whole idea that was built in like the last 10 minutes of the film. Yeah. That, that was what was eventually going to so happen. What did you think for the first hour of the film? I couldn't tell if it was an actual, I mean, so for me, the film, I thought it was building towards that moment where the Babadook would be a beast that takes over the mob. That was my, Miles Mommy, is now playing. Daddy, I it. You did? You do have it. Thea, so, can you say Babadook? Don't teach her about the Babadook. Um, so, we do not have a Babadook. If you buy me a Babadook, Babadook book, Duke, I am going to do Duke, Duke. evil things to you. Um, so that's, so actually the, the film, what happened in the film in terms of up to the mother getting possessed, I thought was going to happen. Um, <laughs> so let me just, let me just. I'll just I think uh, we are living in the world of the Babadook right now. We are. This is the best. Oh, that's a that's a yucky glass. This is the best ending to an episode ever. Isn't um, it? So. Uh, so let me just. Let, I, I'm just gonna go right for it. So, did you like this movie more than A Quiet Place? Um, no, because I enjoyed the cl- the quiet place on like at least a performance level. Uh, well, I acknowledge that the performances were wonderful in this film. I hated it. Like it just made me so uncomfortable and miserable. I, I was never scared or uncomfortable in a quiet place. And I like that. This one, I was perpetually uncomfortable. So basically you didn't like this movie because it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Correct. So that, would you say this then has merit? As I would being- say it was effective. It was effective. I'll take that. Um, uh, you got both Aww. kids on you. I got both kids. I have a Miles hug and a Thea hug. Miles is just walking around. Um, all right, I, I'll take that. I'll take that you at least thought it was effective because that means to me it did what it was supposed to do. All right, we'll take that. <laughs> um, so th- sorry for the shorter episode this time. We'll try and have a little bit more on our next film, which is... Cargo, which I'm very much looking forward to you Cargo. watching. Cargo. So I have no idea about this film. I don't I know anything about it. Um, but I'm looking forward to, to um, no, I'm actually, I, I'm terrified of watching it. I hate the idea of watching it. Martin Freeman though. Martin Freeman. Well, that gives me something. All right. So I think there's only one possible way we can end this though. Are you ready for it? Baba Duke, Duke, Duke. Duke.